Hey, John Dillon here with another tutorial from visualbroccoli.com. In this lesson, we're going to show you how to create your own Photoshop background for PowerPoint. So case in point, uh, if you look at the slide here, uh, we're going to go ahead and make a title slide, which I like to do, uh, have a distinct title slide, which I may use multiple times throughout a presentation or just once, as well as our standard insert slide. And that's what we're going to do. And basically, we're going to do this and kind of create with our mythical company here, Pre-Hospital Training Institute, which I uh, made up this logo for this tutorial alone. And by the way, STEMI is for you non-medical people having to do with ST elevation, myocardial infarction. Of course, the principles we're going to talk about here kind of show more of a medical background. But of course, you can use anything besides the EKG to still get the look that we're showing here. So... And you can see the nice clean look. And there's a reason why I actually put this logo over here, and I'll talk about that a little later on. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Photoshop, and I'm going to show you how I built this. But before we do that, we need to go into PowerPoint and get our size. So what I mean by sizing is this. When we go into Photoshop, we're going to actually make this complete background, and we need to know the size of this background. Well, sure, we can go up here and figure it out, but you know what? That's too much work and I can never remember numbers. So we're gonna do a cheat. So we're gonna go to insert and we're gonna go to a shape. And what I'm gonna do is come up here and just with that rectangular tool, we'll come up here and just basically draw a square that's gonna cover my, com my complete slide. Now I'm just gonna right click on it and we'll just cut it and let's go into Photoshop. All right, so we're gonna go file new and we're going to copy the image from clipboard so not only will it give me the proper size it'll actually give me something to work with so here's our background layer and i'm going to name these so you can follow along with me as i reference them because we're going to have like oh seven or eight layers in here and we're all done with it now let's go ahead and define the color for this layer and the way i'm going to do that is um, i can just click in here and you know grab a blue someplace but uh, I want to give you a specific blue, and I also want to introduce you to the RGBs. Because we're gonna, a little later on in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can actually pull a color. So we're going to pull a color from our logo and use that color to assign it to some of our text. And the RGB color is what you can use in PowerPoint to assign these colors. But the colors I want you to put in here, the numbers, to get us this blue that I was, I'm using is 8, 50, and... 188 and that's the blue I want and I'm going to go ahead and fill this with blue that's looking good let's add another layer, layer and we're going to call this our vignette and this one I'm going to actually fill with black so I'm going to bring black to the foreground grab the paint bucket tool fill it now we're going to grab the elliptical marquee tool And I'm just going to get fairly wide there. And I may have to use the arrow keys to kind of position where I want. And I'm going to hit the delete key. And get rid of those marching ants. Now, I'm going to add a, one of my favorite, or I shouldn't say favorite, but it's one I use very frequently, the Gaussian Blur Filter. And we want to go, over, like, let's say, a radius of 75 pixels. i just do OK. And I want to drop the opacity quite a bit on this. Because I just want a little kind of little dimension here in the color. I certainly could have tried to fool around with the radio, uh, the radio gradient tool, but um, I found this just easy, just as easy to do. So that's why I do that. All right, let's add another layer. This one is going to be our grid. And this is kind of nice. I use the grid for a lot of things, not just for medical stuff, but I use this a lot because it just adds a nice little dimension and a nice little style that you can't create in PowerPoint. Okay, to create our grid, we need to actually create a new document here. So we're going to go New, Blank File, and I'm going to resize this one to 40 by 40. I'm going to do OK. And I want to go ahead and fill this layer one with white. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the default colors here and bring white to the foreground. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the paint bucket tool, fill this with white, and I'm going to create a new layer. Now this one, what we're going to need to do is need to select layer one. So I want you to go ahead and layer one, 
hold hold down the command key on the Mac or control key on the PC and select the thumbnail and we get our marching ants. That's the quickest way to select the area. Now I'm going to select layer two and I'm going to come up here to edit and we're going to go ahead and stroke outline. So it's going to outline what has been selected. And I want the width to be one pixel, the color to be black, and let's make sure inside is selected. If you do it outside, you're not going to see your image. All right. And I want to make sure, and this very important one, turn off the white background. And we get rid of those marching ants. And you really can't really see it. You can kind of see it around the edge, but it's kind of hard to see. But it's there. Now we're going to go edit. And now we're going to actually define pattern. So we're going to take this image and use it as a pattern. So I'm going to name this 40 by 40. And we'll just go pixels. And we're done. We can actually get rid of this. We're now going to go ahead and create our pattern. So we're going to go to edit. And we're going to go fill layer. And if this is the first time we've ever used this, it's probably going to be set to foreground color for you. We want to come down here and select pattern. And down here, we want to choose that 40 by 40 pixel. And you can have a variety of different sizes in here, which I typically do on my computer. So I'm going to just select that, do OK, and it's brought in the grid. The next thing I want to do is inverse the color. I want these, instead of being black, I want it to be white. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to filter, adjustments, and I'm going to go ahead and invert. And you can see there, there's a shortcut hotkey right there, Control plus I for the PC or Command plus I on the Mac. And that softened it up. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just drop the opacity quite a bit here to probably around 8 or 9%. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little Gaussian blur to it just to soften it a little bit more. And I'm probably going to go around 3.1 on that. Again, just don't want it to be so harsh. I want it to be kind of soft. Uh, I don't want to have any competition with any images that I have on there. So this is really just a background, and it's kind of like a watermark. So that looks good. Now, the next step we're going to do is bring in my EKG. So I'm going to go File, Open, and I'm going to have some ECG art, if you can find some of that on the web. But the good news is you can download all these assets right from our website so you can follow along so you don't have to search for it including the completed program, or the completed project. Now, uh, first thing we're going to do is we want to get rid of this white background. So to do that, let's go over, over here to our layer, or background, and double click on it, and just say OK, so we unlock it. I'm going to go ahead and grab the magic wand tool, and just click on the top, and on the bottom. I'm going to hold down the shift key, and so I can select both what's above and below, and now I've got everything, and hit the delete key. And that's looking good. Now I'm going to show you in this lesson a few different ways to move images between. The first one we're going to do here, since we have both images open down here, I'm going to go ahead and select my blue, and I'm going to bring this image, just select it, and just drag it up here. Now this will only, this will grab the whole image you'd bring in. So if you had multiple layers, oops, let's try that again. There we go. I clicked too hard on it, so I actually opened it up. So if you had, if this had like four or five layers on it, it would bring all those images over. And sometimes I just want something directly from one layer. Okay. So I want to resize the EKG here. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and transform. So we're going to go ahead and do image, transform, free transform, or control T or command T. And I'm going to make this quite large. I just want one EKG. Now we get a little white here, but that's okay, because we're going to kind of, really you know blur it up here anyway and the other thing is normally you don't want to do what i'm doing making something larger because it's going to degrade the image but we're going to be adding the gaussian blur and softening it so it's not really going to be uh, that visible to actually kind of get a better look at this i'm going to hit the control key plus zero or command key plus zero to kind of show the complete bounding box so i want to just kind of make this a little larger and i really just want to do it to the point that the uh only one EKG is in here, so and then actually just a little bit larger. Let 
make sure I have the EKG here. And I may actually just do just a little transform. Maybe let's just bring this down just a hair. Okay. I can live with that. And now we're also going to inverse this as well. So we're going to go to filter. And we're going to do uh, adjustment and invert. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing we did with the grid. We're going to go ahead and drop the opacity quite a bit. And maybe like 6 or 7%. You want to make sure when we're done with it, we're going to save the Photoshop file so we can always make adjustments to this later on. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to soften up this EKG. I don't want it to be so harsh. So I'm going to go Filter, and I'm going to go to Blur and Gaussian Blur, and maybe just bring this up to around 5. The reason, again, is if I'm going to bring images in, which I plan on doing in my PowerPoints, I don't want these images to compete. So I want it to be nice and soft. And again, you may want to come back and view it. So let's go back to View so we we can actually see what we're working on here, fit on the screen. And that's not looking too shabby.